70 miles an hour. A small wobble coming. 75 miles an hour now. Whoa, we're almost keeping up with the cross track. 78 miles an hour. Whoa, we're burying the speedometer. 80 miles an hour. Take a look here. Over 80. <laughs> this video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. This video is also brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me back again with the Coda Electric and I finally have <laughs> the license plates to put on this thing so we can put the first few miles on our barn find 2012 electric coat. I'm gonna walk you through the full story of this car, everything that's happened, how we ended up with it. For the hardcore viewers, you'll know the story on this one where it sat for over 10 years in San Jose, California at DGDG's vehicle lot. Um, I'm just so thrilled that we got the title. We have the license plates. It's an amazing story. And in this video, we are going to take it on a drive for the first time. So let's go have some fun with our 2012 Coda EV. <laughs> For friends who have a good memory, you'll remember that last summer we got a call from my friend Nick George at DGDG and he said, Hey Kyle, we found a Coda EV in the back of our parking lot that like no one knew what was doing there and we, we basically went over to check it out. And the story was that Del Grande dealer group, DGDG, used to own the Coda of Silicon Valley franchise. And this was one of the vehicles that was delivered to Coda of Silicon Valley to eventually be sold one day down the line. And uh, forgive the strap job here, this is all not proper or anything like that. I just had it on here so it didn't fall off the trailer in front of my house. Um, but essentially, the original dealer group went out of business. So did Coda. They only delivered 150, 160 of these. And this one is number VIN 84. There's another plate that says number 33 inside of the Coda. Right in there, it shows number 33 of 500. Um, so, you know, pretty interesting car to say the least. And, and honestly, it was looking in bad shape when we found it. The paint was completely mangled. The tires had melted into the pavement. And I said, this would be a fun project to share with our audience. The only problem was they had no keys for it and they did not have the title for the vehicle. And so we went back for the second video and we found the keys and we actually started it up. And after over 10 years of sitting, the 12 volt battery was low, of course, but we jumped the 12 volt. It still had 30% state of charge in the high voltage battery, which is a roughly 33 or 36 kilowatt hour LFP, lithium iron phosphate battery pack, which has great cycle life and great longevity, very similar to the new base Tesla battery pack that's in the new Model 3 standard range LFP. And I was just thrilled. I was like, amazing. And then even crazier than that, my friend Nick said, DGDG, I loved the video so much that we did. They will just give out of spec the Coda as long as, long as we share the story of the car and everything with you, which of course, that's what we're here to do, tell stories of cars. And uh, we towed it back here to Colorado. It went to Colton's shop and it's halfway through a paint restoration. It's been compounded, but not polished. It actually looks amazing. It's a little dirty and dusty at the moment, but underneath, other than little spots like this right here, the paint is coming back almost to new. The only issue really is the roof that has damage beyond repair. So we're, we will either repaint or just wrap the roof black, but down the side of the car, it looks brand new again. This was all faded, completely destroyed, and Colton has been bringing this car back to life. The interior, it almost looked like someone died on the inside, is back to brand new again. Really interesting to see the inside. The seats have almost swelled a little bit, maybe even in the heat, but I gotta say, it, it's looking great. That door piece is really the only issue. 
Same thing here with the center console, missing the navigation display in there. And my friend uh, Robert from Aging Wheels has another one of these. Speaking of interesting things about the Coda, uh, we just found out that Mullen, who purchased Coda, I think in 2012 or maybe even after, uh, is actually selling off their entire parts of Codas and one of the ideas I had with Robert was, why don't we just buy all of the remaining Coda parts? I mean, they have like 10 motors, 100 windshields, just crazy parts. And we'll just give them away to Coda owners who need parts to keep these vehicles on the road for time to come. Now, it's a huge project. It's probably going to be a lot of money. I don't know if we'll do it or not. But at least Robert went over there to take a look at the inventory and uh, perhaps there's something there, perhaps not, but I don't know how much I want to <laughs> go down that path here, but at least it is interesting that Mullen is selling off all of their Coda stuff. I think they have 11 brand new zero mile Codas as part of that as well, which would be a really interesting thing. So let's get the story moved on. I'll tell you how we got the title and eventually the license. So that is the story up to this moment. So how did we end up getting the license plates and everything for the Coda? Well, the problem was that Del Grande Dealer Group no longer owned Coda of Silicon Valley. They went out of business over 10 years ago. I think 12 years ago, they went out of business, something like that. So here's a car that had never been retail sold right? So there was never an original title issued for the vehicle. And Del Grande dealer group had the car, but did not have the franchise to retail a Coda. So um, Del Grande dealer group, DGDG, called up California DMV, submitted a whole bunch of forms and paperwork. And we thought this was going to be a bonding process, a two year long, three year long back and forth of arguing. And I have to say in only about six months, California DMV said, Yep. Thank you for the statement of fact. Thank you for everything. We will sell the car or we will issue a title to Capital Volkswagen in San Jose. And so Capital Volkswagen assumed ownership of the Coda and they have sent over all the paperwork here just this week to Colorado and have transferred it and sold it to out of spec. And now we have a Coda. They didn't even charge me sales tax for it, Larimer County, because I literally didn't pay anything. I said I paid $1 <laughs> in the video, but I actually never even gave them the $1. So they didn't charge me anything, which is great. So it's a free Coda. And I'm so excited to share the video. Now, of course, I'm spending thousands of dollars on the paint restoration with Colton. His services are not cheap and uh, we're really trying to get it back into life. I've put brand new Nokian tires on it. Again, we're really restoring it. So there is money going into it, but I have the license plates. We should come up with a fun customized plate. So if you have a good plate idea, let me know. I was thinking either DGDG as a, uh, you know, paying tribute to Del Grande dealer group who gave us this car or maybe free 99 it was Colton's idea or even just something as basic as Coda EV, because it's really a car that no one knows what it is. But let me know your comments below. What we're gonna do is unhook the Coda from the trailer. I have to hook the Rivian up so the trailer just doesn't go to the sky. So we'll hook the Rivian up to the trailer. We'll back the Coda off. And then we're gonna go for the first official drive, legal drive of the Coda. If you remember in the previous video, we drove it around the block on a dealer plate and it drove great. But really since then we've put no miles in. I think I picked it up with 50 or 51 miles and I think it has 57 miles on it now. Just around the block, little things like that. But we're gonna go for an official drive. For the first time in this car's life, we're gonna get the diffs warm, get the bearings run in, all of those things. It's really, really fun. So let's do it. Hey, Alyssa, how's it going? Great. You excited? So excited. Yeah, thanks for helping getting the car unloaded. I've got the ramps down. We're not, we're going to leave the trailer here. So I've just hooked up the uh, connection point so the trailer doesn't go to the sky when we back this thing off. And then we're going to take this for a ride. Yeah, let's go. So it's time. It's unhooked, ready to pull it off the trailer. I have the keys. One incredible thing about this car is the 12 volt battery is over 10 years old. It's definitely dying. But what's crazy is once it's charged up, it holds its charge for a while. So I think the 12 volt battery should be okay. And once the high voltage battery is active, of course it uses a DC to DC to charge the 12 volt. I definitely need to put a new 12 volt battery in this though. Um, it's over 10 years old, it's reached the end of its life, but it's amazing that sometimes it still holds a charge. I'm not sure about right now though. I'm not getting the flashing on the, uh, on the lights. Let's see, if it's dead, we'll have to put a jump box on it. 
Oh, I think it is working. You can see my light up Coda here. Very nicely going. In we go, key on, ready flashing. And the car is active. Let me show the viewers here if you don't mind. Take a look guys, you can see 57.5 miles on the odometer. We're at 70% state of charge. It does have some phantom drain, but that's it charging up the 12 volt battery. And now that we have the license plates and insurance and everything on the car, I'm actually gonna full charge and cycle it and just show the BMS what's up. Once we get that, we get everything broken in, maybe a couple hundred miles on it, we're gonna go for a range test and ultimately see how much energy capacity we think the Coda has lost by sitting. It's a really unique use case. So let's back her down. Did you already square up? No, I have not. Just make sure we're good. I got as close as I could get. Eh, that'll do. Looking good? Yep. I'll get up a little bit closer. Looking good still? On that side yep. too? Yep, yep. And the Coda is off for hopefully the last time. <laughs> Amazing. I'm gonna put it in the driveway, let's get the license plates on it, and then let's take it for a drive. So I've left the Coda on just uh, as we closed up the trailer here, just to keep the high voltage battery active, get everything running, and I have climate control off in the vehicle, but I'm actually hearing the battery cooling fans running pretty loudly. So I wonder what's going on. It's definitely doing, I've never ha seen the Coda do that behavior. Um, I'm gonna actually gonna take my uh, charger here, my EVSE, it's not technically a charger, and plug it in and see if it actually works. So let's shut her off. We're at 70%. We'll shut her off, leave the keys in it. I've got a long extension cord here, and then we'll plug it into the Coda and juice it up before we head out. So weirdly, my wall connector will not charge the Coda, even with the adapter. So there's some weird communication thing going between the uh, Tesla stuff and the uh, adapter here. So that's at least good to know. Don't show up here dead. I can at least charge it on the 110 outlet and it charges fine at Colton's shop on the uh, Autel EVSEs that we have over there. So I definitely know the BMS totally isn't calibrated because I was watching when I first started it, the state of charge kind of wobble around there a little bit. It was like 65, 68, 70, blah, 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 blah. And there it just is like giving up on charging there. So, okay, well, We'll charge it when we get to Colton's up to 100, and now we can drive it. So the only thing I don't have here are the screws for the license plate. So I'm going to just put the plate in the back window for now. I think it should be okay. And then we'll get some codes. Whoa, full send. Look at that guy. Ripping. Setting a new lap record. Even getting on some tire squeal around there. The Kia Club. Kia boys at it again. So, all right. I'll put the license plate in the back window. And then we'll hit the road. Well, you join us in the Coda now. So let's go headlights on. Let's go climate control on, AC off. We don't need that. We'll put it to warm-ish. See if the climate control works. Face and feet, fan on number one. We've had everything sort of decontaminated out of this whole car. So it feels pretty fresh. Smells great now, I would say. What do you think, Alyssa? Yeah, it does, doesn't bother me. Yeah, better than the e-golf, that's for sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put the, oh, this is so funny. Can I show the viewers this? <laughs> this is amazing. Normally with these switches on the side to adjust your gauge brightness, you go up to make them brighter and down to make them dimmer. But here it's the exact opposite. It's down for bright and up for dim. <laughs> so you're increasing the level of dimness, not the level of brightness. That's pretty funny. So in the, we are in drive, handbrake off. First few legal inches in the Coda. Oh yes out of the driveway oh no someone's coming <laughs> not that fast yeah okay and here we go definitely a ton of motor cogging at low speed and we are off does this have new tires brand new nokian tires one all season okay thanks for sponsoring well, they didn't sponsor this video but they gave us the tires so thanks nokian no horn it doesn't even feel like there would be a, a place for a horn 
it's legal. We're driving the Coda on the streets at rush hour. Take a look ahead. This is amazing. So this is 25 miles an hour. Feeling fine. I, I hope we have enough range to make it to Colton's. It shows 70%. Now, originally this vehicle was rated for 88 miles of EPA range, I think, and it was really inefficient. Like, I think it definitely did better in real life uh, than what it stated online. So we're just gonna go nice and slow, let everything come up to temperature, just be gentle on it. We'll cruise over to Colton's and then, um, yeah, that'll be that. He'll finish up the paint restoration, get this thing ceramic coated. It'll look great. We're regenning right now. We're in the green regenning. Whoa! This is amazing. <laughs> the braking, yeah, it's got brakes. This is next level. All right, let's pull out here. Don't die on us now, Coda. Wow, great. You know, and, and I've heard of Codas reaching over 100,000 miles, Alyssa. Yeah. I saw one that had 300,000 miles on it, believe it or not. Wow. I don't know if we should. It was just what it indicated, but that would be a lot of miles. So just cruising in it now, it feels totally normal, doesn't it? Yeah, it just feels like a normal Alibaba car. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is like an NPC car or like, you know, the most, if you, if you just wanted to describe a car to someone, this would be it. It's like Grand Theft Auto car. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very basic transportation, but it's electric and it was paving the way at the time. And I'm so glad that it's working. The even with the vent on one, it's really producing a lot of uh, a lot of fan here. Let's just crank up the heater. Not not quite to max, but pretty high up there. We've already lost a couple percent on the display. I can see, and we've added one mile to the odometer. Wow! I'm going to be driving this thing a lot. It's got 58 and a half miles on it now. Um, you know, I want to break it in, get it going, do a range test and just use it and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, that's about it. Yeah. I'm not sure enjoying it would really be the term. It's not like an enjoyable car, but it's kind of fun and nifty and a cool story. And, you know, if we just need to bomb around town, this is a great option for sure. And it's got, you know, 33 kilowatt hours, something like that when new, not, nothing to, nothing, nothing to sniff at. Any final comments, Alyssa? I just never heard of somebody say nothing to sniff at. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nothing but to scoff at. Nothing to sniff at, I nothing guess. Nothing to sniff at. <laughs> no sniffing here. We're no, it smells sniffing. good in here now. It no longer feels like someone died in the inside. Everything's been cleaned, detailed twice. 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 Because it was butt done by that guy. Oh, yeah. Because Col Colton wouldn't even touch it. And then Colton got it afterwards. Uh, so, gotcha. Look at the regen on this thing. Coming in. It's an LFP battery pack test some of the handling characteristics. Whoa! And we're just being very gentle on it. Feels like it's got plenty of power. Look at that, 35 miles an hour, cruising. Wow. See you on the highway. We have been cruising at about 45 miles an hour top speed so far, and it's felt safe enough, Alyssa, don't you think, to jump on the highway? I guess, yeah, there's no option now. Yeah, we're committed. Uh, the speedometer only goes to 80 miles an hour, which is confidence inspiring. So, speed limits here are 75. So, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll be hanging on the right. The motor cogging at low speed is just a little jarring. It goes, whoa, 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 and you're like, is it gonna stall or is it gonna make it? But here we are merging onto the highway. Gentle throttle, not going wide open. I have floored this car before, it's been fun, but I don't wanna brick it or anything, especially with the battery not being fully charged. Suspension's comfortable. Yeah. Almost feels like the front and rear are tuned completely differently. Oh, we have a low tire pressure warning light coming on the dashboard. But if that's our only warning light, we're doing okay. Going straight. Listen to the noise, 65 miles an hour. Wow. Should we go for top speed? Yeah. Okay, that's full throttle. 70 miles an hour. A small wobble coming. 75 miles an hour now. Whoa, we're almost keeping up with the cross track. 78 miles an hour. Whoa, we're burying the speedometer. 80 miles an hour. Take a look here. Over 80. <laughs> I'm wide open. Whoa, we got a zap icon on the display, which means there's a high voltage issue. <laughs> that usually means you have to plug it in. You've reached bottom voltage. It could be 
typically I've heard that comes on at about 30%, but it could be that we just drained a lot of the battery and so there was some voltage sag. Let's just keep it gentle. Yeah, let's play a little safe here. Yeah, so we'll just go, you know, 65 or 70 over to Colton's and uh, plug it in, charge it up to 100 and balance the BMS because it could be thinking that it's at 30% even though it's showing an indicated 57% at the moment or so. But it's feeling great. It's tracking straight. Some vibrations, nothing major, but I can't imagine this drove great on day one anyway. I mean, this car really started out at a low bar of acceptability. So, but we're just cruising at 70. Really feels smooth. The motor sounds good. Nice high pitch whine. And we're going in the Coda. Good headlights too, I gotta say. Good headlights. This is amazing. Well, we have made it to our highway exit. I've just been cruising between 65 and 70 miles an hour. It's been great. We're gonna do a big, long hit of regen as we come off the highway ramp here. We're at 50% state of charge indicated. Again, I'm not sure why the high voltage zap icon is on. Now, that usually means you have to charge, is my understanding. So again, BMS could be out of whack, but the car's been driving fine. The state of charge has been decreasing linearly. It's been very nice. We're coming off, coming through some roundabouts to test the high performance characteristic of the car. I would say, yeah, I mean, from based off the, my, my friend Luke, who actually works for Porsche, uh, reviewed this car originally. I forget for what website, but he and I had a fun laugh about Codas and um, he basically said that this thing drove like crap on day one. And I would say this drives, it's got really light steering, no feel, no connection, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to me like anything's been deteriorated over its 10 or 12 years of sitting. My, my impression overall is that this probably drives just as bad as it did on day one. And it's really, you know, I, I guess my expectations were a lot lower for this vehicle. It's really nice. It's relatively quiet. It's comfortable. There was very little wind noise on the highway. Um, the only thing you do get is a, about 65 miles an hour to 70 is a loud resonance from the electric motor. So you have a lot of electrical noise coming from up front. But if you go faster than 70 or below 65, it's pretty much dead silent. Um, the heater is not working in this particular one. Uh, and that could just come with time that might come. But look, the zap icon's gone away, Alyssa. Wow. It seems to be happy now. So. I'm just not needed sure. a little shake and bake. Yeah, if there's any, uh, the old Italian tuna. But if any uh, Coda owners know what that zap icon means, let me know. I'm pretty sure it means it just wants to be charged. Some rattles coming. Yeah. <laughs> They'll come in with more miles. And I can't believe it has tire pressure uh, monitoring system. I'm sure those sensors are all gone, which is why this light's popped up. But we'll double check the pressures before the next drive. But I, I'm really impressed. I have to say it's the seat's fairly hard. It's almost like it's just, you know, never been sat in before. So it right. needs to be broken in a little bit. And I think that's going to be the case with this car. The more we drive it, maybe the better it'll get. That happens a lot with vehicles where if they sit, they kind of get, you know, stiff and balled up and not that great. But if you drive it and they loosen up, they feel great. So I'm going to be driving this thing this week. My e-golf is currently broken, actually. Time and put the new suspension on it, but it's too low. And there's an issue with the axle after the install. So we have a new axle coming uh, and the suspension's got to get dialed. So this is going to be my around town daily for the week, which it's actually not going to be because we're dropping it off at Colton's for the paint restoration. Yeah. I just got excited for nothing. <laughs> Gosh. So anyway, it's going to get dialed in. The paint's going to come back to new. We'll wrap the roof black and then I can drive the Coda. And uh, I can't say I'm going to drive this thing all that often or everywhere. I much prefer my e-golf to this. Plus there's so many e-golfs on the road. I feel like I can do anything to that car and trash it. And no one's going to care. This is still one of the few surviving Codas especially with this little mileage on it in the world. And um, yeah, I think it's something we'll just take out every once in a while. What do you think, Alyssa? Just to make sure she's still alive. That's right, but it's, it's truly wonderful. It's really great. And uh, yeah, let's go bring it into Colton's. I'm so happy we have this car registered, titled in our name. Wow. What I need a to day. get a new head unit for it. I need to get this door panel re-glued or maybe just a new door panel in general. And then she'll be ready to rock and roll. Well, we have a big regen hit on the way down. I have to say the car has been driving 
great, amazing. Over all the bumps, I can feel even the suspension changing its character as it's getting broken in and moved uh, and warmed up. It's almost like the dampers, or they're probably shot after 10 years, I would think, I don't know, but it's really not bad. The braking performance has been wonderful. Steering, oh yeah, great. F1 handling here. And high beam test. Oh wow, you pull it back for high beams and then you pull it back again to shut them off. You don't push them forwards. That's pretty wild. I still have not figured out where the horn is. There's the, what, the wipers. But we're arriving at Colton's, so let's go put it in the garage. I think what we're actually gonna do is we're not gonna full charge it now since he's gonna be working on it for the week. We're at 45% state of charge. He'll be working on it for the week, but before we take it back to the, uh, to the office, we'll probably leave this one at, we will full charge it then and then balance the battery a little bit, so. Access granted. Here we are pulling in. I need to order a new 12 volt battery for it. And that's kind of it. Well, yeah, we'll get the screen, the door, but I can live without those. I think uh, I just want to make sure it's got a new 12 volt so it doesn't die on us wherever we go. But dang, look at it in the reflection. If you look to the right here, it's a good looking car. Look at that thing. Nice, it's got LED tail lights, LED running lights, halogen headlights, of course. There's a uh, Colton's ID4 sitting here. We're actually gonna go test plug and charge on this one because 2023's got upgraded. So next video coming soon. A little creak from the steering rack, but nothing to be worried about, I don't think. And boom, Pant handbrake on, into park. I know why Colton didn't answer his phone. I wanted him to get a video of us coming in, but um, he's jamming out in there. I can hear the bass thumping. Yeah. So let me give you my final thoughts and then we'll end this video. Welcome to the clear detailing shop. And uh, for those of you who have not checked out Colton's out of spec detailing video, this is the e-golf. The cheap e-golf is now slammed. It does need to come up just a little bit. And it's been changed in color to Verde Solaris by KPMF just wrapped it this color. And I just can't believe this is the same car that Alyssa and I picked up not too long ago that was completely trashed. No more warning lights, completely new suspension, every bushing, every, every bearing replaced. It's got the rotiform CCV wheels, is it Colton? Yeah, nice. And uh, we've done some ozone treatments to the interior with that machine over there and the smoke smells coming back. I mean, really saving this one from near death, 125,000 miles on it. Still just awesome. We got the doggos over here, Charlie and Stella. But um, yeah, Colton's wiring up a new vacuum cleaner. Yes, sir. So that's cool. He's got the Ryobi tools. Yeah, we're Ryobi fans over here. If you're just doing home stuff, that's awesome. The Twizzy's still here doing great. Uh, this is sort of artwork more than anything, but it still runs. It charges fine. It's sitting at about 30% state of charge for storage. I did a degradation test on this, actually. It's only lost one kilowatt hour, but when you're starting with six, okay, it's actually pretty significant. So here's the Coda out here, and uh, what a machine. Can't believe we got the thing registered, titled. We can use it. I can't wait to get it when the roof is corrected. It's going to look almost brand new at that point. And yeah, what an awesome time driving it over here. Really drives great. Drives great. Um, really impressed. So there you go. The Coda is alive. It's doing well. More updates to come. We'll do a range test and a degradation test in the near future as soon as we can. And I can't thank you guys enough for watching this out of spec reviews video. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.